Whatever is likely to be the fate of a Ramanzil Palace in the days ahead, it surely was a landmark of that era. In the book The Days of the Beloved, written by Harriet Ronkin Linton and Mohini Rajan, originally published in 1974 by Orient Black Swan, there are two whole chapters devoting considerable space to the lives of its inhabitants and their staff. The authors have an enduring relationship with Hyderabad, the former having lived in the city for six years in the 1960s and a regular visitor since then. The latter, the late Mohini Rajan, belonged to a Hyderabadi family and was the granddaughter of Raja Bahadur Venkata Ramareti, who was Kotwal to Usman Ali Khan Nizam VII. With such a pedigree and fine attention to detail, the authors have brought to life the enigmatic style with which the Nizami novel. Fakrul Mulk Bahadur and his family lived in the palace having more than 600 rooms employing the services of more than 500 odd retainers. As the book liquidates whatever the motivation for constructing it, Aram Manzil was one of Hyderabad's great palaces set in spacious grounds enclosed by miles and miles of compound fall. Inside was nearly everything needed for a pleasant life, including formal gardens, bridal paths, picnic grounds beside a pleasant pond for putting then schools and two full-sized polo grounds. Near the diary, which had 20 or 30 animals, lived the dairyman and their families, while groom and troops had quarters not far from these stables. There were riding horses, carriage horses and polo ponies and vehicles in great variety. The lofts held enormous quantities of fodder for the animals, while huge stacks of hay from the jaguar rose yearly between dairy and stables. Detailing about the duties of the staff on the noble payrolls, the book or whole families were employed on particular jobs. For instance, dozens of gardeners were assisted by their wives in keeping the garden sparkling and the gravel paths swept and smooth. Some of the wives were employed as weepers inside the palace as flush toilets had not been introduced. Scavengers and their families had quarters at some distance from the others. Rather, unsurprisingly suiting the regal lifestyle of the noble families, the authors write that Fakrul Mulk's European wardrobe was sent to Paris for laundering or cleaning. Aside from his socks and handkerchiefs which were discarded after being used once. Happily, the Nawab was not inconvenienced by the length of time required for shipment to and for the Nizam once observed that Fakrul Mulk possessed a change of clothing for every degree remarked on the thermometer, surely an underestimation the note. Among other things described in great detail about the palace is also the routine of the Nawab who began his day early and actively. As the book informs, at 4 in the morning he rose and spent an hour at a 
the Gurus work out with Indian clubs. To refresh him afterward, two quarters of milk all frothy and form from the buffalo were brought in a silver bowl. With the milk, he took two pails of opium. A practice he shared with Maharaja Kishan Prashad among many others. It was the aspirin of the 1890s. Of course, the opium was prepared by one special servant. It was ground with sugar candy, almonds and ghee, shaped into pails wrapped in silver foil and placed in a small cool box which had a matching pair of cool tongs at the authors, whose diligent efforts come across effortlessly with such descriptions a fascinating glimpse into a bygone period indeed.